Air slot, but the net. Game is low. Three, two, one, go! Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to talk about the ultimate form of camouflage for the outdoors known as the ghillie suit. Now both Spartan 11 7GW and I have eyes on camera. Can you see us? I don't think so. That's because we're wearing our homemade ghillie suits. You might remember the bush wookie from Bad Company too. That's exactly what we're going for. I've seen a couple of people wear these suits at airsoft games and some of them never even get detected the entire game and they're able to take out just loads and loads of bad guys. But what does it take to make a ghillie suit or to acquire a ghillie suit? The most economical option is to purchase this one from Airsoft GI. This is a pre-made ghillie suit from Condor Outdoor. I've seen people wear these. I've been killed by people wearing these. They are pretty darn effective. It's also much cheaper than building your own ghillie suit. So if you want to check that out, it's linked in the video description. Now, the only other way I know about acquiring a ghillie suit is to actually build your own, which is the route that Spartan 11 7GW and I have taken. So before you take on a project like this, make sure you got some funds and make sure you got about 30 hours of time to actually work on building the suit. Now the first thing you need to build your suit is pants, jacket, and a hat. I went to Airsoft GI, bought multicam pants, multicam jacket, and a multicam boonie hat. Make sure you take a good look at the surroundings that you'll be playing in and pick a camouflage that blends in well. This is going to be the base of your suit. And once again, check the video description for links to these items. Now let's dive into the building process. First thing you wanna do is cut out a nice big rectangle on the back of your jacket. You then wanna replace this rectangle with a mosquito net. You can either sew it on or use something called shugu to attach it on there as well. This basically allows the back of the jacket to breathe, otherwise you're gonna overheat like crazy. It should look something like this when it's done and the mosquito netting actually provides some good structural integrity to the jacket. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to apply a layer of fishnet to the back of the jacket and to the back of the arms of the jacket and even overlay it onto the shoulders and slightly on the front. Here you can see Spartan 11 7GW walking me through the process and showing me where to cut the net. You'll wanna cut out the general shapes in this process, but always remember to leave a little extra net because if you have extra, you can always just cut it off when you're done with attaching it to the jacket. Now to attach the net to the clothing, we use something called shoe goo, which is generally meant for shoe repair, but it's great for gluing clothing on clothing and uh, it's held up really well throughout the process. Now obviously it would take forever to glue every little section of the net to the clothing and that's not really what we're going for here. It needs to have a little bit of give, so you wanna just go every few sections or so, just give it about two to three inches between dollops of glue. While this is drying, you can move on to do the pants and the hat. Same process, you're only gonna cover the back of the pants with netting, and you can cut in little incisions to make sure you still have access to the pockets that you would like to use. The hat is the easiest part, just cut a big circle around it, leaving extra in the back, and then just glue on top of the hat. Make sure you have a little bit more than you think you need, as it's always easy to cut away the netting later. Now, as Spartan 11 7GW tests on the jacket, you'll notice around his shoulders, we fold over a little bit of that net to get a tiny bit of netting on the front side. You don't wanna cover the front of any of these clothes with too much netting because it's for moving around and crawling and if you get netting on the front it's basically going to snag on foliage. The netting really doesn't have to look pretty. For the most part you want to get good coverage. Symmetry isn't too important because you're going to be covering all of this up anyway. The next step in this process sucks. It's time consuming. It's tedious. Your fingers are going to hurt by the end of it but it's well worth it. Just remind yourself of that end goal. You're gonna have some kick-ass ghillie suits that you can blend in and just be awesome in general. So what is this terrible process I'm talking about? It involves taking some burlap and breaking it down into its basic material, which is jute. 
It's a fairly basic process. You cut off the ends of the burlap. You start pulling out the fibers. To make it go faster, I recommend working with a piece where you're pulling out approximately three feet long pieces of jute. This way, they're already the length that you want to work with. After you have several mountains of jute, you're going to want to start to dye it to the colors that you need because we're going to be gaming in SoCal. We're going to need some light tans, some light greens, and a little bit of dark brown and a little bit of dark green. Get a tub, fill it with water, put some fabric dye in there, throw the jute in, dye it that color. You can experiment with different quantities of dye to get you slightly different shades of that color and then dry it somewhere for a while. You can even let it dry in weird positions that'll give it kind of a nice wavy effect once you're ready to use it. Next up, we're gonna be tying the jute onto the fishnet that we have just glued to the clothing. In this process, the suit is actually going to come alive. It's a very rewarding process, again, very time consuming, but you can watch the suit develop right in front of you. You want to grab about five to ten strands of jute, preferably with a mixture of colors in there to give it a more natural look. You'll find the halfway point, thread it through the net, and tie it at the halfway point so that it hangs down on two sides. Start at the bottom point of the netting and work your way up so that the higher up jute hangs over the jute below it. As you make progress, you're gonna really see the suit start to come alive. And don't be afraid to play around with it because the messier this thing looks, the more natural it seems to get. Now to get to this point, it took us all day. I'm talking 16 hours or longer, and that's even having some of the jute pre-prepared. This is not a one day project. We did most of the work in one day, but definitely set aside some time for yourself and don't get discouraged if it's taking too long. Once the jute process is done, you're gonna wanna take the suit out to your area of operation. Where do you want to blend in? In this case, we went out to one of the backfields at SC Village in Southern California and started to collect some of the local plant life. Get some good sized stalks and branches with some leaves on them and start threading them into the netting on the back of your ghillie suit. You can tie it on with some of the extra jute laying around or even some of the jute on the suit already. For the most part, I found just threading it into the netting was more than enough to secure it. Don't be afraid to get a lot of plant life on there. After all, your ghillie suit really is just the backdrop for the stuff that you're gonna add onto it once you get to your area of operation. And finally, we're at the best stage in the whole process, which is trying on the ghillie suit for the first time. It's certainly helpful to have a friend around who can tell you if you missed a spot on your back or if certain areas look a little weird, they can usually help you fix it on the fly. And speaking of which, I would have not gotten this far in building a ghillie suit without the help of Greg Wong, a aka Spartan 117 GW. He also has an airsofting YouTube channel. I recommend checking it out. I'm going to link it in the video description. And doing a little spin around for you guys, you'll see I got a lot of plants sticking off of me. Surprisingly, it's not very uncomfortable. In fact, I maintained a decent amount of agility. And once you have the ghillie suit, it's time to start figuring out how to move around with it. Movement is your worst enemy. Basically, you want to sit up in a spot, stay stationary, and then when you do have to move, there's different techniques for getting around quickly. Here Spartan 117 GW is practicing creeping around in the bushes. Obviously this is probably one of the fastest forms of movement that you're really going to want to do with the suit, but I gotta say once he actually stops and stands still, he just looks like a bush. The eye loses him very easily and that's the whole point of this suit. Once you're not moving, it's very hard to locate somebody, especially when you're looking for somebody that just looks like a soldier. And here's a perfect example. Very few things are going to give away Greg's position, he hasn't even really gotten into the grass too much he just kind of looks like a bush now one of the next stages to really blending in is doing a gun wrap and also putting some net over the scope that you have because it's got this sort of black hole effect that seems to appear in the middle of the bushes and it could draw an eye to your position Still, you have to admit, even at close range, it's very easy to lose Greg in the foliage, and once he goes prone, there's basically no detecting him whatsoever. From what I hear, the ghillie suit is an ongoing process, and I've already seen areas of my personal suit that I would like to tweak to further improve my camo. I will say, though, it is very appealing to be a bush on the battlefield. Having eyes on target with them having no clue that you're actually looking at them, let alone pointing a gun at them, is a very cool feeling to have, and I can't can't wait to test this out in action. 
That'll have to be my next ghillie suit video though, and I'm still working on the sniper rifle that is going to accompany this setup. Now, if this video has inspired you to get a ghillie suit or make one of your own, remember you can get a lot of the basic components from airsoftgi.com. All of the necessary items required have been linked in the video description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Spartan 11 7GW's channel. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.